we're taking a look at the new nine piece set feral that you get from the clan wars and i'm here today with biohack and dior be dead what's up hello 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 so i was kind of talking about this on my live arena videos as well but big part about clan wars if it's gonna be hit or miss is that the rewards need to be good if they are not super good then there's not really a lot of incentive for the clans to really go hard on it and now we finally know what the what the rewards from it are i mean you're gonna get like chaos or and primal shards and so on basically the same rewards as on both cvc and hydra class but it's with a new item set it's not gonna be with Swift parry or deflex and accessories that I was hoping for, but it's with this new nine piece feral set that has some interesting effects. Can you show the like the one and two piece set bonuses the text file? But ba basically, like you get uh, forty accuracy from one piece, five percent speed from two piece, another forty accuracy from three piece, immunity buff for two turns from four piece. 5% speed from 5 piece and you have 50% chance to be immune to sheep from polymorph at 6 piece which is going to be very interesting 7 piece another 40 accuracy 8 piece 5% speed and 9 piece it's basically reverse version of protection set that your allies deal more damage per debuff placed by this champion so that makes this set very strong something that I think we will see a lot on debuff champions like Galatir and so on. Though it does have a lot of competition with stone skin set. Basically stone skin set because Bolster is dead. But what do you guys think about it? Maybe yeah, starting... I mean, first off... Oh, yeah? go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say that starting from you because you guys were not, not talking. <laughs> no worries. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I mean, first off, the stats are insane. Like 50, 40 accuracy and 5% uh, percent speed for a two-set bonus, you know, that's basically perception set right off the bat. And perception set is already one of the best sets for stats that you can get in the game. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I I mean, the this, this set seems very, very strong, right? Like already there's a strong argument to put, you know, your go-first lockout style champions, whether they be, you know, Crixias or Yumiko or whatever, um, in perception if you can pull it off and here you got perception with all these other bonuses so straight up it's just a huge upgrade for for sure in pvp um i think the 50 percent chance to prevent the placement of sheep is very interesting i feel like that's something that's going to be really strong in live arena but i'm curious to know your thoughts in classic arena because live arena and classic have a very different mentality where in classic you kind of want to win every fight or almost every fight and live is much more about taking risks and just doing the best you can given the scenario so that 50 percent chance might be a risk you're willing to take in live whereas classic you might not still see a ton of uh debuffers but i'd be curious to know the rest of your your guys' thoughts also that not Nine, that five percent uh, nine piece uh, in addition, it's going to be really interesting to see whether that is uh, a universal buff for the buffs placed across the entire enemy team, or if it's specific to the target. So, if you put up, you know, decreased defense in Hydra, is it one count for every single Hydra head, or is it you know just the five percent on that one particular head when you hit it? So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out because that will make a huge difference in terms of how strong that nine piece is. Okay, uh, I yeah, I agree with you, uh, Biohack. But uh, regarding the 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 polymorph chance and the set in general, uh, I personally think it'll be extremely strong on classic, especially on defense, uh, because uh, there's a lot of champs like Galatil we're seeing on on defense nowadays, uh, and Kriegs here and Armands and stuff like that. And uh, Galatea's biggest weakness is is actually getting shaped in on the classic defense, particularly because mm -hmm. he's already very tanky and he has different passives to keep him alive. And a lot of the mythical supports are just generally pretty tanky. So 
uh, they're not going to get one shot anyway, and so they don't necessarily need stone skin. So putting them in this new set will mean uh, it's more likely to get you defense wins uh, from blocking people out. And then even more interesting for Live Arena because uh, obviously on as Bioek was saying on uh, Certain people that run very fast teams, you don't necessarily need a uh, stone skin because obviously on the set, it's important to note you can't run stone skin and six piece because I think that's why they made it six piece. So you can't have the stone skin along with this bonus, which which is probably a good thing. But uh, in LA, if you're one of those players that likes to go first, this would be by far the best set for any debuffer. Armand's, Quixel, Colorteal, everything. And I think it'll maybe push the meta even more towards speed and, and less stone skin. And one more thing to note about classic uh, defense is that at high, very high level uh, on reset, uh, immunity is actually becoming well, has become quite meta recently. And this set actually has Teuton immunity as a four set. So on certain champions on defense, if you can have the the six piece, it also includes immunity and it's just gonna be by far the best set on, on reset, in my opinion. And then I guess the last thing to note is the, as Bioax said, we're not sure how it's going to work with the 9-piece bonus with the per debuff, if it's per champion and per head, and there's so many things to keep in mind, but I guess the Hydra people will calculate that pretty soon. Yeah, what I would say about that is that, like, first of all, you could, like, you can't run it with stone skin, and I'm sure Parium did that intentionally because, you know, having lethal and stone skin or you can pair many other 4 p sets with stone skin and that's super strong and they probably don't want people to be with 4 p stone skin 100% of time. But you can still, you could still go for 5 ps and get a lot of stats and the immunity and still go with stone skin just because you get so much accuracy and other stats. I don't think that will be that popular, but you could do it. And it has very good like set bonuses, even just one piece or two piece. So I think that makes it a little bit more attractive for like early game players and you know people people that are not super end game and thinking about like platinum arena or live arena. But I to, to what Biohack said about the fact that the meta is different in classic arena, I agree it's not that big deal there. I think you maybe put it on like one champion for defense. It's not like you need multiple champions on that set, but everybody is pretty much running Grixia or Galatir. I mean, one of them or both of them. So you maybe you put that champion in this set and then you have everybody else in stone skin like you used to before. But I think the big issue here, like I think it's definitely going to be popular in like top arena. But is this set really worth for other players who are not pushing Platinum or top level Live Arena? Is it worth enough to do like uh, focus hard on Clan Wars to get this set? But what do you guys think about that? Oh, sure. I was just saying the stat bonuses are really good. You know, it's basically perception. And then you're also going to be able to combine that with any accessories you get. So imagine, I mean, just like getting a single ring, getting 40 accuracy in your ring slot for just putting on one ring. Like that is a huge amount of stats that you can get just ignoring, you know, any of the other set bonuses and that kind of thing. Um, so I think there's going to be a strong incentive for people to use it just like this. And even new players. I mean, one of the things about new players is you always struggle to get enough accuracy and speed um, just to do early dungeons and that kind of thing. Uh, and so just getting into um, faction wars and just picking up some of that, even like four piece perception stuff can make a huge difference just because the set bonuses are so good. 
uh, on those perception sets, and that's basically what this is acting like. So I think, yeah, even for new players, especially before you get your great hall max and you really struggle to get enough accuracy, this is going to be a, a really easy way to just get a bunch of those stats for sure on your early champions. When I was yeah. looking at Reddit earlier today, they were not, not really super excited about this content, and they were basically saying that it's just a lot of work for nothing and it's not super interesting. That's kind of what I'm afraid of, that if it's only very small population of the players that actually care, cares about this content, it might be kind of issue for clans and it might not be a good thing for the game if this game mode totally flops. Yeah, so I guess that can take us to the to the next the next thing that uh, to incentivize sure. new players. Uh, they have to give give us shiny new things like a, a champion avatar, primal fragments, stuff like that. Obviously, the rewards are a bit questionable. I mean, the, the first thing we noticed is oh, yes. why are tier three and four mm. rewards better than tier five? I mean shows that Larian's maybe a bit out of touch, uh, thinking that <laughs> yeah. five-star gear is better than... <laughs> did, did you see that biohack? What do you think about that? So you, yeah. get, you get five-star mythic, <laughs> mythic pieces on tier five. So basically tier five is much worse than tier four or even tier three. And I'm sure they're going to change yeah. it over time. But this, like, for me, it reeks like there was nobody uh, like beta <laughs> testing this content. It was just the developers who maybe don't really play the game a lot. And they Somebody just... doesn't play the game made these tier rewards. Yeah, I feel like there, there wasn't like a single single person who like fact checked the reward who actually plays the game. No offense. I'm sure sure there's some people that play the game. Like I know in Noob's video he was saying that the developers actually were super into the game and played it a lot. But I don't think the people who went through these rewards really like thought about this. Yeah. What, what do you think about uh, this? I will have one thing to add to play devil's advocate a little bit. I definitely saw people saying like the tier five rewards are garbage compared to the tier four. Like, here's the thing, F especially if you're using this set on a PVP champion, you're building it for specialist style champions, typically those that want to focus heavily on speed and accuracy. So if you look at a mythical piece of gear, like your max roll on a five star mythical piece is I think 30 speed if you get a quince. Uh, and it's or, you know, a, whatever. And then you, you like 28 for a legendary six star, right? If you perfect rolled all of the, the speed on that stat, right? Which is kind of what you're going for. You're probably going to be really looking to roll a lot of speed on these sets. Now, the problem is, is the glyphs kind of make that a lot worse because if you glyph it, you only get five on the five star versus eight on the six star. So the six star is slightly better. Uh, and it's also easier to roll a quad than a quint, obviously, significantly easier. So, you know, it's it's definitely the case that the tier four rewards are better than the tier five, but it's not like like I hear people say all the time, like, oh, tier five gear or five star gear is useless, like da 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 da. Like some of the best champions, my Georgia is wearing a five star chest right now. Like the five star gear is not quite as bad as people think it is, but especially when you break down all the stats for mythicals. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's no question that the tier four war reward is definitely better than the tier five. You could maybe have some argument about the tier three, the epic um, six star versus the five star mythical. But yeah, it, it definitely it, someone who's making that isn't really paying attention or doesn't really understand what's going on. Yeah, actually, when we, we were talking about it before, Die or be dead was kind of speculating that maybe they did that on purpose, but I don't think they really thought about it that far. I, I feel like it was just some kind of accident no. that they probably will fix at some point. I'm sure but, they're going to uh, fix it at some point. But yeah, I, would also say, I would also say that even though obviously it's going to be on super champions, so you care about the speed and accuracy, but if we really talk about the end game stuff, the champions that you're going to use this on, it's going to be, I don't know, Galatir, Krixia, those kind of champions. And you still yeah. want to build them tanky. It's not like you don't care yeah. about the tankiness at all. So Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, um, for example, on Galatir, you're probably going to run a, a resistance uh, chest plate and banner, and you definitely want those to be six, though. 
Yeah, Galathir especially, because he's he's a Andre tanky too. reviver champion. Yeah. Crixia, I mean, a lot of times you use Crixia as a go first lockout, and if she she doesn't need to be as like she's not there to like really survive and revive your team in the same way that Galathir is. Like you want her to be tanky, but I would say it's far more important for a tanky Galathir than a tanky Crixia. But yeah, at the end at the end of the day, you want every champion you use to be as good as possible. So <laughs> Uh, and do, do you think that so you think in future you will definitely put your Crixia on this set or you're still gonna think about if you keep uh, well I don't know do you have your Crixia in Storm skin or is it just full my speed? Crixia is in all speed right now but I'm gonna change her build in the future like I built her as fast as I could um with you know some consideration for accuracy and resistance yeah um, I think usually when when you see them in let's say classic arena defense and even in live arena but you know some people might have multiple copies of her but i think usually i see them in four b stone skin yeah i think in defense you definitely want stone skin for sure um and yeah even even offense i mean it depends like the thing about uh acrixia is she can be a speed threat by herself right um Whereas like other champions, like your Arbiter cannot be a speed threat without a follow-up champions that are speed tuned with your Arbiter, right? Uh, Acrixia, if she goes first, she can mess up the other team all by herself, right? So th there's kind of two ways to build her, which are either speed or stone skin. And stone skin is probably the more popular one, but both can work. It just depends on what kind of stuff you're doing. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So I'll I'll Oops, I will definitely put my Crixia in this set as soon as I can, for sure. Because she's so vulnerable to Polymorph, too. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, continue? Do, do you want to show the like re rewards next about... Yeah, okay, you're showing it like that. To do different uh, chests. So this was pretty confusing to me as well. And we were talking about it for a while. So on every like clan wars, you actually get both accessories and artifacts at the same time so it's basically like normal cvc plus hydra class combined you get the hydra class chest and then you get the normal cvc rewards meaning that you can get item pieces on at least artifacts without actually winning the battle i'm not sure how it's going to work with the accessories though yeah so to me it seems like the first uh, element of the rewards uh, might be like CVC, where you can four to zero someone, or three to one, or whatever, and uh, everyone will get some of the artifacts at the end. That's what it it seems like. But to get the um, victory chest, you have to win. It seems. Right? Do uh, the is there a competition for the chests, or is it just reaching milestones? I'm like I sure. think if you reach all the milestones, you would still get all the chests, even if you lose. Oh, I, sorry, maybe chests is the wrong word because that's confusing. Yes. But you'd still get all the artifacts. It, like, look, it says like 700k, 500k, 300k. I think if you reach those thresholds, you get those boxes with the artifacts in them, and it, the win just determines whether you get the victory chest. Oh, okay, that could okay. make sense too. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, so that makes maybe we were like completely opposite way on it. Yeah. So in in that case. Uh... I could be wrong. I think that's what they said. That. Yeah, that, that sounds logical. It seems like it. Yeah, so in that case, it seems like they're locking accessories beyond winning and just giving you the artifacts for yeah, and the milestones. It, and, it's, you know, important accessories can be. Yeah, and it's going to so, be interesting to see like how this affects the like competition that in, like, um, in normal CBC, People are making deals and dodging good clans and so on. And we have thought about, you know, just switching the clans completely for a Hydra class to get easier opponents. So can you game this system or, and our clan actually, our clans actually going to do it? I think that's going to be a big deal because this, I think many people are afraid that this content is going to be super time consuming and hard. I don't know if it's going to be time consuming just to do the couple battles. But it's gonna take a lot of like effort to like come up with the setups for the clan and so on, and I don't think many people are gonna be that much into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the think... one thing I oh go ahead. Oh, uh, I think uh, the the main thing about it, rather than time consuming, is it's just gonna uh, require a lot of clan coordination. 
And yeah. all the content we've had so far doesn't really require any coordination. I mean, CVC, you just agree whether or not to push and then dump points. And Hydra Clash, you agree whether to tank or not. And that's pretty much it. But uh, in this content, uh, it's there's going to be a lot of coordination. Because, for example, if we, if we look at this, um, there's going to yeah. be different I like these teams. Parts. Yeah, <laughs> this is an interesting conversation. So there's going to be different teams uh, for different factions. And I mean, you can look look at the video and see some of the options. But uh, I guess people will start getting ready for maybe Faction Wars teams for Arena. And we'll, we'll get, Shini will get into that just now. But something that's important to note is that uh, plan coordination will be needed because if your strongest players go early on, for example, and attack all the weak teams and then leave the difficult teams for the weaker players, then that's going to cause a problem. And also the other way around, if like weaker players in your clan go and attack strong teams on the other clan and then lose, and you don't get, like you use, you lose your attack keys. Yeah. And that can cause you to lose as well. So. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right about the coordination. Like, I don't think this is going to take the average player much time to participate in, but it's going to take a couple of people in the clan a lot of time to manage, <laughs> um, which is a little unfortunate for them. So, yeah, we'll see. I, I kind of wish Plarium would have done this maybe a little bit differently. Like, for example, instead of having each player assign a team and then like to a specific zone and then you have to kind of like coordinate with the whole clan externally it'd almost be easier if they like let everyone put a team there and then like let the clan leader select you know which team to actually pick at that spot but then you know obviously that would take the players out of the pool for any other stuff and that kind of thing so it'd be a little easier because it's just going to be really really hard to figure out like who has actual teams they can run at all the different places it's going to require so much just bookkeeping and coordination and all that kind of stuff. So I think they should do a better job of, of that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's also important to keep in mind that a lot of players, even in relatively high up clans, are not super active on Discord and mm -hmm. checking messages. So even if the clan leaders are doing a good job, it, there's always going to be a couple of players that don't read or follow the instructions and it's going to cause a bit of a mess in some situations. Yeah, and, yeah. I kind of feel uh, like it's possible that there's going to be like smaller selection of clans that are super into this, and most clans are not really like it's not worth the effort for them to like think about it that hard, and they just play it casually. But I saw a lot of like people afraid that it's going to be too time consuming when I was looking at the Reddit threads about it earlier today. But as you can see on the picture, it's just three battles, and if you have like two days on a week, every other week, where you do like three battles, that's not that much. But I guess the, like Biohack said, the real time consuming part is actually to like organize the clan and not, not doing the actual battles. Because if we talk about tag team arena, you do like 20 battles every day, that's much more time consuming. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah, for sure. And then one more thing, if you want to go into it, you need uh, we were speaking earlier about how you might end up with crazy creative stall teams and stuff like that because if it's uh, high elves, for example, and someone runs a tanky Galati defense, it'll be almost impossible for a lot of teams to, to even beat it at all. So, yeah, I'm gonna go into that a little bit. Yeah, I think there are like we don't really, I don't. Maybe it was Tataman today, but at least I don't fully know all of the available conditions that you can set. Like, we were talking about the fact that I don't think they will allow you to use epic or rare only, like, team conditions, because then you could totally cheese it and nobody's gonna have, like, Orgrun rare only team. And it would maybe be too easy for some people to do it. I don't think they would do something like that. But even with legendaries only on just one specific champion, uh, one specific faction. I think you might find some factions when you think about it more that there's like 
a champion that you can't counter in that faction. Like, I don't know, let's say that there's like a Tormin and you don't have immunity champions in that faction or you have some bad debuffs and there's no cleansers. Something like that. I think some factions might be too tanky and there's no good nuker that can beat the tanks and stuff like that. And maybe you can just make style teams that are not even aiming to win, but the enemy team can't win your team either. I think there might be some kind of interesting stuff like this. Yeah, I could definitely see that happening. One thing that's... Oh, man. Like, this has the potential to be so much fun, but it's going to be so hard to manage. Uh, just talking about, like, rare-only teams and things like that, like, part of the coordination of this is even if you have weaker clan members is if you can set you know very limited restrictions like epic only champions of a certain faction or whatever your weaker clan members can then fill those slots with those things as opposed to you know hey are all the best mythicals kind of deal which creates interesting strategy there but also another thing that's just going to be so hard to manage across yeah. the entire clan I, I don't think the epic only thing has been confirmed though we all only know that you can set specific factions. I, I think it would be super fun if you put if you could put Epic only, but I'm like pretty certain that Plarium wouldn't do it though. Yeah, I mean yeah, Epic only we'll sounds fun, but I mean I think if Plarium thinks of it from a revenue perspective and getting no whales to spin, they probably uh, want it so that uh, people try and get more of these average legendaries and mythicals in all of these factions and if you look at a lot of the mythicals they they're very capable of carrying the specific faction uh, yeah like if you look at high elves for example if you just if you have a high elf only legendary team and you have color like what is going to beat him here and i mean that's just an example but uh, that'll definitely incentivize whales to, to spend more trying to get mythicals in each faction. Yeah, Thank one you. thing... Go, go ahead. I was going to say that this is going to have the same sort of thing that Centranos has too, where uh, uh, I was because say mythicals the same have thing. two forms. Yeah, yeah well, go ahead. No, okay, maybe it's not the same. I was going to say that it's going to be a mass amount of silver waste and it's going to be super annoying mm. and maybe we need to have like different players specializing on different factions to like try to save silver or something like that but what were you saying oh yeah yeah, that's a good point um i was gonna say is uh because the mythicals have two forms they can count as multiple types of champions so like lazarius is a support champion right even though we all think of him mostly as a nuker so mm -hmm. if you have a support only champion but you're allowed to bring lazarius it's it makes those mythicals really, really strong when they can essentially cross over as and fill, you know, be classified as something that they're really not. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's probably like, that's you know, intended and like a selling yeah. point for Plarium because just like Dire Be Dead was saying that they probably wouldn't do epic only rules just because that would kind of not incentivize players to spend money on this game mode. Yeah. Yeah, but Centralis like almost... does the same thing in terms of um, uh, like the support classification kind of thing that makes Mythicals really strong there as well. Yeah, um, almost but we do like have... Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, yeah, so it almost feels like re the release of Mythicals were uh, geared towards this content. I mean, if you think about it, specific uh, factions this way, and then one OP Mythical that has multiple forms that can be either your support or your damage dealer that can just slot into pretty much any team and carry it so obviously yeah. at the top top level like mad and ipl uh, it's that's not always going to be the case but because everyone has every champion pretty much but any clan below that that maybe has a few whales yeah you know, it'll incentivize a lot of spending I think those clans, like if we talk about IPR and Mad, for instance, I think this is going to be a good way for Plarium to, like, you know, sell all of the new champions. That every time they release, like, one OP champion in one specific faction, there is going to be, like, arms race, and they can do an early 15 x 7 for that champion. And chances are that, like, those people that want to win every trophy every time, they will, like, you know, have people. <laughs> People wailing for every good champion if there's 
15x event for it. Yeah, absolutely. Faction unity is also going to be really strong here as well. Hmm. Yeah, maybe this is like a new avenue to actually use it because I feel like so far the faction mm -hmm. unity champions have not really been used a lot. They're kind of tricky yeah. to use in, basically in, almost impossible to use in live arena. I would say impossible. In classic arena, like almost like it's possible to use them, but because, you know, you can like mix and like match like the, the best champions of random factions, it's kind of hard to get a specific faction team, even with an insane faction lord, to compete with those. But so far, basically, they have seen no use in any content. Yeah. That new lizard looks pretty insane, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, for instance, like, wasn't Aislinn the first faction lord that we got? And people were super yeah, hyped about it. Like, that was during the Taras meta, and people were afraid that it's going to make it even worse. But nobody really even ended up using Aislinn at all, even when you can yeah. combine it with the Ukraine duo. Yeah. yeah now we're gonna be I saw people to try in Live Arena and it was always like a, you know, a thanks for the free win because it just didn't <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> so I mean some people did finish like top twenty and top top ten with those in classic arena, but it really wasn't a thing and those same people would have would have done the same finishes with other stuff too. Okay, so but I think it will be really strong in the new region or in the new like when you're actually limited to factions, then they're going to be pretty yeah. dominant, I imagine. Yeah, and maybe like even if it's not like epic only rooms, but even if um, since it's just spe faction specific room, I think it might be possible in this scenario that people will even use epic in some specific factions for some random reasons. That might be kind of interesting and like add some new like strategy and nuance to the game. I remember when Doom Tower was released, everybody was having a lot of fun like theory crafting new teams and coming up with new stuff. We haven't really seen that kind of stuff for a while. Did that for Centranos, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I feel like Centranos is mostly about, you know, do you have silver to swap items and do you have champions yeah. on that specific room? And if you feel those conditions, then you can usually do it. Uh, one yeah. more thing we, we mentioned earlier is uh, Shani was speaking about our silver cost is going to be an issue with this because obviously we're going to be swapping our best gear around a lot. But I think uh, it's also good to note that uh, gear presets is actually uh, it's very good that we have it for this because without it, I don't even want to imagine swapping all the gear around for each team. So, yeah, that's going to be really true for sure. Yeah. By the that's way, for sure is an issue. What, so, what do you guys think now that we have kind of uh, talked, talked about it in more detail? Do you guys think that Clan Wars is actually going to be popular among the player base? I think people will definitely do it because I do think it's going to be relatively easy to do it in a casual capacity. Like you just kind of throw your stuff in and cross, you know, hope for the best. Um, so I think probably everyone or almost everyone will participate uh, in the same way. Like you can't not participate in CVC, right? Like you're going to get points for your clan, even if you don't try. Um, how, but I, I think most people probably won't take it that seriously. Y yeah. I I kind of meant it more in the sense that is it going to be new like uh, like uh, Hydra or new Platinum Arena that there's like a good amount of players that are super into it like you know maybe content creators making videos about it or like a big part of community trying to theorycraft and making guides and stuff for it. Do you I think, think it's going to be big like that? Uh, I think uh, from what I've gathered as one of the leaders in, in OC is that probably the the top clans, let's say top 100, 150 clans are going to, I would say a good chunk of those are going to take it quite seriously from what I've gathered and try to coordinate and uh, go for the wins. And of course, uh, like Clans like Mad and IPL are gonna go take everything seriously and always go for every win because to compete in 
top plat you need every everything pretty much but i think what we might start to see below that like and what i'm already starting to see some speculation about is that we might start seeing plans start to focus towards uh, some plans Hydra and Hydra Clash and some plans this content and some CVC. Like we've already started to see that recently uh, in OC. We, some plans are focusing on some content, but I think uh, it's definitely going to start splitting clans more because some players are just just dislike Hydra and in spite of the rewards they they don't want to really push too hard and we might see the same situation yeah so we, we might start to see clans split up and focus on specific contents especially now with more and more content being added to the game people might decide they only have time to hard focus on certain stuff and maybe do the rest of it casually uh, and what about, do you think the rewards are actually like good enough to incentivize players? Because that's the one thing that I was speculating that like, I think the set is super good, but I think it's very niche. I don't know if most people really care about it that much, even though it's like the one piece and two piece sets, you, you still get a lot of stats and it, it's great. But I don't know if people really care about this set that much. I mean, uh, as far as incent incentive, I think, I mean, this is tier one, so the rewards look kind of garbage, but what does tend to incentivize a lot of newer players is a shiny new champion, for example. So even if it's a low amount of fragments, people will think out of FOMO, they need to start going for this now because they want that champion. Or also the the fragments, for example. Even though it's so low, which is actually a bit crazy. Uh, let's just say it's 30 fragments for tier 6 or whatever. Even if people don't care that much about the set, a large chunk of players in this game will be very attracted to the shiny new champion and, and primal fragments. So I think there is more than enough incentive to, to do it. And as you were saying earlier, Shini, there's very few content that gives you shards actually and like for free i mean the last content we got that gave free shards other than primals was doom tower so yeah three yeah. years ago by the way biohack what do you think about the new champion because um i think it kind of sounds interesting on paper but i don't know if that's really going to be popular i feel like it's only only good if you are like faster than the enemy and even in that case there's like other other options available yeah um i think she's gonna be really good in trendo reset teams like she's you know like white queen or she's like nia but on you know way better um that ability to reset allies turn meter and give 50 percent like that she's gonna be insane for hydra uh for hunt like uh, trendo hydra teams for pvp uh, I, I probably wouldn't use her and I mostly run go first. Um, like I feel like they, you know, they're all hyped about intercept and they're making a big deal about intercept, but it's just like one ta ally, two intercept stacks. If it great gave increase attack or something, maybe, I don't know, like, yeah, or da did a revive or something like that. I agree. I think yeah. the, the CEC and the fact that it can get polymorphed is good and it's clearly made to appeal for like PvP players, but I don't think she actually has enough to make it worth using in Arena. Mm -hmm. Also, another thing that we were talking about before is that it seems like there has been a clear um, intention from Raid recently to try implement different counters to Polymorph. The Intercept stacks like counter Polymorph, and then this champion is immune to it, and then the new item set has uh, 50% chance to be immune to it. I would not be surprised if we get other champions or other effects with uh, some kind of polymorph counters in like in the near future as well. Yeah, I feel like sooner or later we're going to get a turn meter boost champion that gives like team wide turn meter boost with intercept and something like that. And that would kind of really let you run, you know, your bombers or your, your, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, or something like a necklet that places intercept uh, at the start of, I mean, bef yeah, at the start of the turn, so you don't have to go first. Mm -hmm. Something like that could be interesting. But yeah, I agree. I think the problem with this, this looks more like a Hydra champion to me because block buffs and decrease speed and then reset. She's really good in Hydra, yeah. Yeah, but for PvP, the problem is, especially in high live arena, uh, everyone runs stone skin, so like building her super fast and going first is gonna do pretty much nothing, right? Even though she's uh, immune to sheep. I mean, you're not, at least if it, it would have been a lot better if she buff stripped first and then did this, then might have been a bit more usable. But yeah, I, I think I you're just you're just better off using Galatir or Krixia and putting the new <laughs> item set on those and hoping that you don't get polymorphed. I think that's about it. Yeah, agreed. Well, okay. the mantra with the new set would probably be better than this. Yeah, yeah, good. That's what I was going to ask. Is there any other like uh, good champions or some like not so like obvious strategies that you think you could use with the new item set? I think obviously Galatir is the best champion, but is there something else that maybe maybe could become meta that wasn't used? At this point, I mean, it's certainly really strong for like Shazar, for example, or Shazar. Yeah. Oh yeah, bomb <laughs> champions. Yeah, yeah, bombs. Um, that bombs new mythical then, bomb. Yeah, armor. bombs, and then uh, also things like Romantu and uh, what else? Um, yeah, I mean, even potentially. Some of the, no, not new, because, yeah, I don't know, mostly bombers and certain niche debuffers that we use sometimes, like Romantu, I think will benefit from it. I mean, it's also not a, like, we could see it get used on um, uh, Mithrala and stuff as well for the immunity even more than, like, the, the it, it's a pretty interesting set on Mithrala because it gives you all that accuracy, which obviously she wants. It gives you her the immunity, which a lot of times you want to use Mithrala to counter bombs specifically. Or, you know, just be your cleanser. And then it also, because she puts up so many debuffs, it can kind of help against um, potentially getting polymorphed with her. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah it, it, a, it sounds a great, like, like great set for Mitrala. I don't know if Mitrala is that uh, relevant in the meta, though. Like, yeah, nobody really uses her. Well, people use her against me when I run like double bombers, but only yeah, as like I, a last pick to counter my bombers. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I I use Mitrala, but I I feel like she's not really up up to the times and relevant in the meta. I mean, she used to be top tier for I don't know the first six months or almost the first year since she was released. But for a free champion, I would be shocked if she was like a top tier meta in PvP for many years in row. Yeah. Uh, anyway, is there anything else we wanna? Yeah, do we have any other things that we didn't bring up or any closing thoughts? Not for me. Good for now. Yeah. Okay, I, I, guess, I guess we got everything done. I mean, it was a super long video, so <laughs> th thanks for both of you for uh, joining on the video. Do you want to, you know? Chill for your channels or your clans and so on. <laughs> uh, sure, yeah. Uh, Biohack TV on Twitch and uh, Biohack RSL on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, if any if anyone's looking for for a cluster to join, uh, OC as OC we have uh, one of the most clans in the out of all clusters in the game. It might be second or so to oblivion and we have every type of clan and we work together well as a cluster and uh if anyone's interested just join the discord and we'll find you a clan uh so it's just discord slash omega centauri okay but by the way here's a here's a a, a question at the end how do you think like this is completely irrelevant but what do you think uh what do you think are, is this going to be different? Like, let's say in Hydra Clash, the best clan is IPR, for sure. It's not like even contested. And then in 
like cl classic arena it's like mad and it's completely uncontested as well Wh what do you would you think is going to be the best clan in this like game mode well, in my personal opinion pro probably mad as well it might be close Maybe. between Mad and IPL, though, but I don't think anyone else really has a chance to compete you, with you, those. You, you don't think, like, GNL can come from the sidelines and take the rank one slot or anything like that? No, I don't think so. Because, I mean, they, they have a lot of whales as well, but uh, it's IPL and Mad has the most active rails and pvp players and drivers running those accounts so and this is going to require a lot of effort to put into it whereas like gnl is good at cvc because they just you know spend and run cvc on yeah. auto battles or whatever but uh, one of the th I, yeah sorry. Oh, sorry oh i thought you were finished go ahead oh yeah, yeah let's finish off quickly yeah so IPR and MAD obviously have the the whales necessary, but also the coordination. So I think they're favorites for this. Yeah, one of the things I was going to say is I think this content differs a little bit more from Classic Arena in that it's really about a few, like a few people in the clan who really focus on it and pay a lot of attention can t kind of control the entire outcome as opposed to like where everyone in the clan needs to be really good at it if that makes sense um but just based on your coordination and then like if you have like uh you know a pilot play the actual fights or whatever um to be good in classic arena like everybody kind of needs to play their account or have someone out who's not playing you know an account in the clan play the account for them um so i don't know but i'm not in i've never been in either one of those clans so i don't really know how the internal politics of all that work but i will say this seems to be like one or two people can make a huge difference for the entire success of the clan. Yeah, like I, I don't think most, I don't think that part is that relevant for most people. That which clans are gonna be the top clans, but I think this is opportunity for like maybe some new clans to become like, not not maybe beat IPR on Mad, but like become top clans or like clans that um, were not as big. They might be bigger in this game mode because, like you said, I think it's gonna come down a lot more like on the part of effort than let's say normal cvc where i mean i guess there's effort but it's mostly about which side has more resources that they can put into but here maybe if you like try hard it and think about it a lot and coordinate it very well you probably can get farther ahead than you could otherwise yeah, but I, again i don't know if there's that many clans that are going to be super incentivized to try hard this content chances are that it's just going to be the top 100 clans like you said and the others are not even gonna care about it that much you just do three battles two days in row and then you call it a day i'm, yeah. I'm kind of afraid that if this like you know that this content flops and it's like a bad thing for raid but you know there's a lot of things to do in the game so maybe it's not even meant to be the main attraction. Yeah, yeah we'll I mean, see. It's, it's just more content for, for whales to be incentivized to, to spend more on, I guess. So it surely can't hurt the game. Okay, I think nobody has anything else to say, so thanks a lot for joining the video, and see ya.